Kemp Goldberg, Goldberg, who's running for, for, for Come on, people. Running for Democrats. Let's hear you. What's Kemp Goldberg running for? I got any Democrats in the room here. Let's hear it. All right. Now, what's Kemp Goldberg running for? scientific evidence that, it, that every person in this planet is 99% the same. If we are 99% the same, then men and women should be paid the same. If we are 99% the same, then every person in our country should have access to single payer health care, Medicare for all. If we are 99% the same, then the child in Brockton should have every opportunity as the child in Swanson. Together we can deliver on what I've been calling the Massachusetts promise. The promise of high quality education for every child in our Commonwealth. The promise of safe streets and safe places to work. And the promise of jobs that pay a livable wage so that every person who works in Massachusetts can afford to live in Massachusetts. My name is Mike Lake. I'm running to be our next Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much. Our, our senior man here, our congressman from this congressional district, uh, a man that everybody in this room knows who will rally up the troops, uh, Congressman Steve Lynch. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great to be with you. Uh, this, is a, this is a great tradition here and uh, very kindly named after Jean Sullivan, who was a dear friend of us all. She was a, uh, a Democrat's Democrat. And uh, she and Red have put together their family, put so many hours in on behalf of our uh, Democratic Party here in, in Brockton, Massachusetts. We have a wonderful, wonderful uh, group of candidates here. I'm not uh, challenged in the primary, so I'm going to yield my time to them. But I, I just want to say one thing, and that is that uh, it's very important for Democrats that Brockton turn out in the uh, upcoming election. Brockton is a democratic base. We have 
blue collar uh, Democrats here that really provide the difference in our statewide elections and our, our county elections as well. And I'm just hoping that we can make sure that we get our people out to vote on election day. I know it's, uh, you know, it's, it's been sort of a sleepy uh, summer and we're just coming out of it. Fortunately, I think the ads on TV will help a great, great deal to get people uh, into a, a sense of awareness of the election on Tuesday. But, uh, and, and even more importantly, when we go up against the Republicans in the final in November, we've got to have our people turn out. So uh, whatever you can do to get your neighbors out there, I know we're pre I'm preaching to the choir today, uh, but we've got to make sure we get our people out to vote on behalf of all of these great Democratic candidates that are here asking your, for your support today. So it's a wonderful honor for me to represent you in, in Washington, D.C. We start session tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, back in Washington, but uh, I'll vote. I'll vote absentee tomorrow uh, in, in the Democratic primary, and uh, it's a great honor to represent you in, in Washington D.C. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Steve Kerrigan, who's running for lieutenant governor. Uh, we have three candidates in the race, and we have two of them live here Thank in person, you. right here in Brockton, Massachusetts. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks for letting me uh, interrupt your breakfast for a, a couple of minutes. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. You know, we've uh, we've been campaigning a long time. Uh, a lot of us have been out here for a year and a half, uh, running around like crazy, talking to as many voters as we can, uh, trying to get the grassroots organization. I've been lucky enough to build a statewide grassroots organization that helped us win at the convention in, in Worcester in June, and it's helped us really uh, thrive and surge in the last few months leading into Tuesday's primary. But well, we couldn't have done it without folks like you in rooms like this all across the Commonwealth. So, you know, to all of you and to, to Red, certainly, who has been an example uh, for Democratic leadership and, and fighting for Democratic causes uh, for so many years, thank you, just as a candidate and as a Democrat, uh, for all the work that you're going to do uh, over the next few days and the next eight weeks. You know, we've got 44 hours until the polls open on Tuesday morning. Uh, we get to choose the Democratic nominees to go up against Republican Charlie Baker and Republican Karen Polito on November 4th. There's a lot at stake in this election. You know, Charlie Baker is going to go around telling everybody that we should have divided government up in Hill. We should have Republicans in the corner office and Democrats in the legislature because it gives a nice balance. Well, I'll tell you, that kind of balance isn't the balance that we believe in. You know, it's not that it's the balance that, by the way, Charlie Baker, when he was Secretary of HHS, he led the charge on cutting DCF funding. He led the charge on cutting all of our human services and social services funding. That's what they're about. That's not what we're about. Karen Polito, her number one thing legislature was to move all state and municipal pensions to uh, 401k plans, putting at risk all of the hard work that folks who work for our state and our cities uh, have done uh, to earn their pensions. That's not our priorities, and that's not the Democratic Party's priorities or Massachusetts. So we need you guys all to work incredibly hard. I would love to have your vote on September 9th. I would love to have you working tirelessly for us over the next uh, several days. Uh, but what's most important is to make sure that we win on November 4th uh, so that we can give the people of Massachusetts the Democratic leadership uh, that they need. So my name is Steve Kerrigan. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor. I would love to have your vote on September 9th and then move forward together uh, through November 4th and on to January where we can lead Massachusetts forward. So thank you all very, very much. We actually have a real live candidate for governor here right now. We have Steve Grossman, our state treasurer. And, uh, he's a great face to walk Use the microphone. I'll use the microphone. Maybe back here. Because of the TV. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to tell a story about Paul Sullivan. When Paul had a special birthday a few years ago, right here was the celebration. I reached out to the White House and I said, Paul Sullivan has been one of the great Democratic activists that I've ever met. I mean, he and Gene put up the first lawn sign ever put up in Massachusetts when I first ran for governor back in 2002 on a great sign location. I remember that, Paul. You and Gene did that. You were so proud of that. Anyhow, he was being honored. It was his special birthday. I reached out to the White House and I said, what can we give Paul that will recognize his dedication to democratic principles and values? They said, how about a set of cufflinks signed on the back by Barack Obama. I said, great, let's do it. So I got the cufflinks, brought them here, presented them to Paul, he looked down at them, 
Everybody gave him a standing ovation. And then somebody yelled out from the back of the room, hey, Paul, do they sell shirts with French cuffs at L.L. Bean? <laughs> Paul, I don't know how many times you've ever worn them, but it was an indication and a sign of respect for all of us for what you and Gene did together, did together to lift up Democrats all over Plymouth County, particularly in this capital city of Plymouth County, and to give people the tools they needed to compete and win. I'm honored to be back here to say thank you. I've had a love affair with the city of Brockton all my life. My father did business here so many years ago at Napshu. And when I first became chairman of the Mass Democratic Party, you embraced me as I embraced you, and we built a plan and we rebuilt the Democratic Party, not from the top down, but from the bottom up. That's how Brockton and Plymouth County Democrats do it. We do it from the bottom up, we do it from the grassroots, and we do it by appealing to people's sense of what it means to lift people up when people are in trouble. My campaign has really been about jobs, about being a jobs creator, about understanding that immigrant entrepreneurship is our strength, and in a city like this, and in a state like Massachusetts, where more than a million people in Massachusetts weren't born in this country. Uh -oh. We lose it? We got it back. <laughs> weren't born in this country. You think about what it means to grow small businesses all over the state. And that's why I created the banking partnership, and that's why we poured money into small businesses owned by women, owned by people of color, owned by immigrants, owned by veterans. That's the kind of leadership I would provide as your next governor. And over these next couple of days, as we pull together the get out the vote effort, as Democrats all over Plymouth County come together to turn out a terrific vote, particularly right here in Brockton, I'm honored to have the support of so many activists. Tom Kennedy, your senator, Christine Canavan, Mike Brady, Claire Cronin, and just as important as any, Paul Sullivan, who has been with me at my side he and Gene, when Gene was alive, to be there for me and to stand for democratic principles and values. So over these next couple of days, we will consolidate that support. And just as the army of activists helped give me the nomination and the endorsement of the Massachusetts Democratic Party on June 14th in Worcester, so I believe when we stand in the winner's circle on Tuesday night and go up against Charlie Baker on November 4th, and ultimately send Charlie Baker back to Swampscott, Massachusetts as a twice defeated candidate for governor. It is because we understand that it's about jobs, creation, economic opportunity, economic revitalization, investing in our communities. Just as I brought tens of millions of dollars back to Brockton to revitalize the schools here in Brockton over these past few years as chairman of the Mass School Building Authority, just as we brought money into the small businesses that are revitalizing this community, just as I came to Brockton High School and did a Credit for Life Fair to teach the students at Brockton High School what it means to have financial literacy in their lives, so as governor, we will build the kind of plan and build the kind of common purpose around job creation and economic revitalization. I thank you for the privilege of leadership that you've given me as state treasurer. I thank you for everything each one of you will do for me over these next couple of days. Let's go out, let's win this thing, and let's stand together for those principles and values because what makes me proud to be a Democrat every day of my life is that as long as there is a single friend or neighbor or colleague or somebody we don't know who lacks a job, who lacks economic opportunity, who lacks hope, who lacks dignity, our work is not done. That's who we are. That's what we stand for. That's the kind of leadership we provide to the Democratic Party here in Brockton and all over Plymouth County. That's why I want to be here this morning, to say thank you to you, to honor you for your service as we honor the memory of Jean Sullivan for everything she was, she stood for. She is with me today as a presence in my life. She's with all of us as a presence in our lives, and we are all the better for it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Where's Paul Stadensky? He's there!
Who's going to do the Pledge of Allegiance for us? Everybody could please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If everyone could remain standing for one moment. Um, this year, we lost a community member here in Brockton. Um, he lived right around the corner from here. He was our school committee member from Ward 6, Michael Healy. If we could just have a brief moment of silence, I would appreciate it. Chair just reminded me as well, a brief moment of silence as well for Paul Canavan, who used to be in that kitchen cooking us breakfast every year, a good friend of mine. Thank you all very much. We still haven't officially opened this. Let me give you a chance to eat for a couple of minutes and then uh, probably about 10 minutes and then we'll start the official program. All right, thank you. Let me open this up. We were trying to accommodate individuals and also get you fed. Uh, so we were kind of not the way we wanted this to really go. But welcome, fellow Democrats, to the 13th Gene Sullivan Memorial Breakfast. I'm Ozzie Jordan, which I think most of you know. Chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. Thank you. The purpose of the Brockton City Committee is to ensure the election of Democratic candidates. Is anybody here that disagrees with that? I was going to send my henchman to my table over there to come uh, talk to you for a while. We need to get out the vote. You heard that earlier. The right to vote is our most important civic duty. We do not, folks, you came here to hear people speak. I know you want to talk to each other, but also be courteous, not worried about me. But when folks are speaking, please keep it down to a minimum. Thank you. The polls are open from 7 a.m. till 8 o'clock. Some of you who will be out there all day on Tuesday may want to think tomorrow. You still have a chance to, uh, get an absentee ballot, all you gotta do is go up City Hall, you can fill it out right then and there, that way you don't have to worry about trying to run back to your local area, because I know most of us that have done this, you're out all day long, sometimes you just, you're running at the last minute at eight o'clock to try to get back to home. So you can't go by City Hall tomorrow and get an absentee ballot. ballot. Don't forget our youth. We must include our youth at these organizations. Uh, these events, we need to bring them out, we need to tell them what's going on, and just get them involved. One of the things that this committee decided not to do for the uh, preliminary was to endorse anybody prior to the finish of the preliminary election. Otherwise, we've got Democrats versus Democrats. After the 9th, we will be endorsing people, and of course that will be whatever Democrats are left uh, and go from there. Thank you. We have a number of people in the room, and I won't go through everybody. I don't have the list. You're going to do okay. So, uh, just a couple of things. There are sign-in sheets on your table. Ask everybody, please fill it out. The per reason for that, in particular, particularly is to get your email address. It is tough to get a hold of people today. So the easiest thing to do is to just fill that out and that way we can contact you through email. Thank you for that. Am I leaving anything out? Jackie, where are you? Jackie was out early this morning, what? 6.30, rummaging through her garden and maybe some other guys in the neighborhood, maybe. <laughs> Putting together the 
centerpieces that are on the table. Big hands. Big hands. Yeah, I'd like to take one back. Did we decide how these folks will decide to uh, take the centerpieces off? Well, my birthday is October 18th. I'm coming closer to my birthday. There you go. There you go. You heard it. So whoever's closest to her birthday. Wait a minute now. Oh, Paul says, wait a minute now. Okay, Red. On September 20th. So September 20th. Okay. Paul Trump's Jackie. Jackie's also on the Democratic State Committee. She's a state committee woman. Big at all. And Paul. How many years, Paul, on the state committee? Oh, about 30-something. 30 30-something 30 years. Once you get 20, you're automatic. You don't have to be voted anymore to go to the, uh, the different events that are run by the state democratic committee, like the rest of us have to get elected to go to be delegates, etc. Once you put your 20 years in, no, no problem. opposition. No opposition. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. Enjoy the morning. And we will get you out of here long before this afternoon so you can see the Patriots and the Dolphins for all those that can't miss the opening of the football season. Thank you for coming and I'll talk to you at the end of the event. Thank you, Ozzy. What we're going to do at this point is bring up more candidates we have. Uh, we are in the heart of Ward 6 and we have a uh, Three candidates running for state representative uh, to replace uh, Christine Canavan, who is retiring and going on to bigger and better. So I'm going to start first. Uh, each candidate has three minutes. Michelle Dubois first. Thank you, Mark. I hope you can see me over this podium. I'm a little short. So I'm happy to be here with all of you tonight, today. And I want to first just thank uh, Red for all he's done for the city of Brockton and all his beautiful wife, um, now in heaven, has done for the Democratic City Committee. So thank you so much, Ryan. So as you all know, Election Day is on Tuesday, and it's been quite a campaign for this primary seat. I ask each of you for your vote on Tuesday, September 9th. I've been the city councilor here, right in Ward 6, where the VFW is located for nine years, and I've been re-elected five times by Brockton families. My first priority as being a city councilor has really been public safety and making our community a safer place. And that, along with education and road infrastructure repair and senior services, will continue as your state representative if I am so honored to be able to take that post on January, in January 2015. I have really worked very hard um, as a city councilor, and some examples of that is one of the most difficult areas in Ward 6 um, was the village for a long time. There were two very dangerous bars, and during my time on the city council with residents' uh, participation, we were able to close two of those bars that had multiple homicides in them. And that's the type of work I plan on doing at the State House, is to really make sure the community becomes a safer place. And we did that by focusing on getting rid of the, the criminal element and also bringing in single family home development and focusing on education. We built two new schools while I was on the city council. The city council bonded out um, the rebuilding of the track and the football field. And as your state representative, I'm going to bring more money home to the district in local aid, education, public safety, and roads and infrastructure repair. I am an advocate for elders and residents, and that's why when Father Bill's and Main Spring House came to me with the idea of putting in 18 units of permanent housing for formerly homeless veterans, I championed their cause. I am helping them right now, and I've been helping them for the last three years to bring in permanent housing for veterans. My uncle died in Korea. My mother is a member of this VSW's auxiliary. She marches in every parade in honor of her, her past brother. And I want to honor him and every single service member in this city and in this district that has put their, their heart and their soul into service of this country. So I want to thank you all, and I hope that on September 9th, you'll vote for me, Michelle Dubois. I'm number three on the ballot. 
And I'm sorry that I have to leave right now, but I have a canvas going on, and the idea is to get out the vote. So I hope all of you get out to vote. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Next up, uh, and we're going to give you four minutes, uh, is Paul Beckner. Come on up, Paul. Hello everybody, good morning. It's a, it's a real honor to be here, uh, standing before you again. Uh, tribute to uh, Red Sullivan and his wife Jean. This is uh, truly a, uh, a wonderful memorial breakfast and uh, it, it's nice to be here in front of everybody. Um, I'm running the state representative because I believe I have a pulse of what needs to be done to correct our government. Is, uh, it boils down to priorities. Now, it seems to me that taxes keep going up. And cost of goods keep going up. And fees keep going up. But yet, workers' wages are just not keeping pace. So consequently, we have a lot of people who have lost their homes, have their cars repossessed, uh, can't afford to help the kids with college anymore, and that's a whole other thing. So I'm going to try not to go four minutes as you, as you gave me. Um, I don't know how many of you in this room know about the automatic gas tax. I think that's a disgrace. Uh, I know a lot of Democrats favor it, but to me, it's taxation without representation. And I'm totally against it, and it needs to be repealed. Um, as far as priorities, now, in order to set things straight, We've got to have number one priorities being our seniors, our infrastructure, roads and bridge repair. Our school system needs to be funded properly. Our veterans need to get the proper funding. Those should be where our tax dollars are going, folks. That should be our number one priority right there. All special interest groups then can come underneath. And then the legislators can lobby and see which one of their groups are going to get some taxpayer funds if that's where they want to go with the money. But the priorities need to be those top five areas. And right now, they're at the bottom, from what I can see. Brockton has lost about $10 million, I would say, if not more, over the last decade for, Brock, for the school system. Now, I know that they're trying to uh, revamp the Chapter 70 uh, funding, but something's wrong. You keep cutting uh, programs, particularly in funding for the school system, how can that be productive, particularly in this economic climate? Like I'm saying, it's priorities. Anyway, I'm going to finish up by giving you a quote from a great Democrat, Robert F. Kennedy. When a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. In crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current that will sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Now those words definitely ring true today. And I think if we think about those words and what they really mean and put them in the proper context, that things will start moving in the right direction. I'm Paul Beckner. Please vote for me on Tuesday the 9th. And I don't think you can afford not to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And there are three good Democrats in this race for the 10th Plymouth District. Uh, last but certainly not least is Pat Curtis, who's a candidate for the Thank you. Thank you for all being here and for giving me the opportunity to talk to you this morning. Thank you, Red. It's good to see you again. Um, my two children who are past recipients of the Studzinski Scholarship are going to kill me for introducing them. Please stand up and say hi, guys. I'm very proud of them. And thank you for all our distinguished guests who are here this evening. Um, I'm excited. I am so excited for this Tuesday coming up for Election Day. I have met the most amazing people in the three cities that I'm going to be representing. I have some amazing candidate, uh, campaign workers. Say hi. They're going to kill me. I, I met these people this year, and they are the most 
nicest people who believe in me. It makes me very humble and very proud to be part of this campaign. Um, what I'd like to um, let you know is that I've worked hard on my leadership skills and my communication skills. For the past 17 years before I even became a politician, um, and I will be on Tuesday, an official one, um, I've worked for the city and I've worked for our community. When I saw a need for roads in my area, I worked hard to get a petition going and get them repaired. When I saw that there was a need for uh, minimum wage or the, uh, the bill for earned sick time, I went out and I got signatures and I got an award and a citation for those things too. Um, as a community leader, I want to improve the lives of working families. And part of working families, working families need jobs. In order to have a job, you need to have a business. So we need to be more business friendly in order for our working families to get a decent minimum wage and a place to work close to home and not have to travel so far to get those monies that they need to pay for their rent and their utilities. The horrific drug epidemic that has faced our South Shore community it's the worst in the country, and it propelled me to create, produce, and direct a Brockton Cable Television series on drug and alcohol addiction and awareness to promote the public awareness of this crisis that's eating up all of our resources and our young people. In the past three years, we've produced over 50 episodes, but more needs to be done. My leadership has brought me to this place right here. Now I need to get to the State House. You need me to work for you. I want to work for you. I'm a new voice, a new choice. Peggy Curtis, number one, second on the ballot, State House. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peggy. As you know, there are a lot of races on the ballot. It starts all the way up at the top with the United States Senate and goes all the way down to the bottom, which is uh, one of the places I find myself. There's a state, uh, there's a, uh, let me start over again, Plymouth County, there are a number of offices open. Some of them are unopposed and some of them are opposed. And uh, somebody was in the room who's running, actually, as my opponent, is Matt McDonough, and I'm gonna give Matt the microphone. Thank you, Mark. You know, Mark, we've been opponents in this race, but we've also been able to become friends throughout this race. And um, I was at Tom Coulter's birthday party the other night, and you were as well. Representative Coulter spoke about the needs for civility in contested races. And I, I just want to congratulate you. You and I have had a great relationship in this race. and inspire other people yeah. and uh, when I think about Paul Sullivan, Paul, I, I've known you for about 18 years. <laughs> One of the best races I worked with you on was in 2004. We manned uh, the campaign headquarters, the coordinated headquarters in Brockton together over by the high school, which is now a hair salon. <laughs> but when we were there, we manned it every day, we sent haircuts there. <laughs> when we were there every day, uh, we sent people out to canvas to work hard for candidates. And there was a big blue sign, it was four feet by four feet, that John Walsh had given us to put in the office. I don't know if you remember what it said on the sign. Unity equals victory. So we're, we're on the eve here of contested primaries. And I, I hope that everybody here who has a candidate that they've chosen, if their candidate doesn't make it, they get behind the, their uh, opponent's candidate. I know that if I do not make it on the ballot uh, past Tuesday, I will be there for Mark if he is the nominee. And I know that Mark will be there for me if I'm the nominee. This unity equals victory. Right. And before I say just a couple words about my own resume and what my ambitions for this office are, I'd like to thank somebody else in the room today. Bob McCarthy is in the back of the room. Bob. Bob is our out at his business on a day-to-day -day basis uh, is something that is a model for both myself and Mark. He's somebody of great character. For 14 years, he's been there every day to help out working families as they go through some of the most difficult times, whether it's going through a divorce, the death of a loved one, and dealing with probate in the state. He's there to handle people's concerns with class, and I thank you, Bob, for that very much. 
think the next registry needs to be somebody who has a strong legal background. I'm a graduate of College of the Holy Cross and Boston College Law School. I went to the district attorney's office after law school where I worked for 10 years, protecting people's interests, dealing with families who are struggling with drug addiction, domestic violence, the issues that sometimes bring people to the front door of the registered probate's office. I'm somebody who's passionate about making sure that courts are open to everybody, regardless of economic background. As a private attorney, since I left the DA's office, I've worked with Pilgrim Bar Advocates to help out indigent clients, people who can't afford their own private attorney, and I work for them and help people as they go through the court process. In my local area in Marshfield, where I'm from, I have my wife Suzanne and my three kids, Kara, who's five, Coleman, three, and little Katie, who's turning one this coming weekend. We're a very happy family. We love our town. We've always been very dedicated to public service in my family. My dad's here, Joe McDonough, who's a former county sheriff and county commissioner. <laughs> and he's been my inspiration in going for public service. Well, as I was in the district attorney's office, I decided that I wanted to do something for my local community. So I ran for school committee. And I was fortunate enough to top the ticket. I did it the old-fashioned way, the way that Paul inspired me to. Knock doors. I knocked on 2,500 doors. I won the race. And we worked really hard, my colleagues and I, to bring new things to our community. For the first time ever, we, we brought full day kindergarten to the town of Marshfield that had never existed before. I worked to build a new community playground. I started a group called Marshfield Kids at Play, a nonprofit. We raised over $250,000 to build a community playground. We worked very hard on issues like that. I ended up being on the high school building committee. I served on the board of selectmen for two terms. And I strongly believe in the values that we all share here today. I hope you'll consider me for register of probate. And I'll give you just a couple of bullet points of what I think I would do in the office. I'm going to support and continue to expand the Attorney of the Day program. I want to make sure that perhaps the only opportunity somebody may have is an indigent person coming into the front door who may not be able to afford their own private attorney, but they have the opportunity to talk to experienced attorneys on a daily basis and get answers to their legal questions. I'd also like to make sure that we have some programs to talk about guardianship and domestic violence and find partnerships with local law schools and also with the district attorney's office. I think those are ideas that, that we need to push forward at the Register of Probate's office. I hope you'll all check me out. I'm at mattmcdonough.org. My literature's on the tables. If anybody wants to reach me, my phone number is there as well. Hope you have a great breakfast. I'll see you at the polls on Tuesday, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.
being on the library, you can applaud, that's great. <laughs> being on the library board for as long as I have, that was my first job before cable. I'm going to use the public libraries to do probate clinics, and I'm going to get it out to the people because court is only open from 8.30 to 4.30 Monday through Friday. What I am going to do is make sure that the people in Brockton have the language services as well at the courthouse, which is is not an easy task right now. I follow a great man who has run a great probate office for 14 years, and that's Bob McCarthy, and I'd like you to give him another round of applause. Because I met Bob when he was a state representative and then a state senator and ran for Congress, and he served this community well, just like Christine Canavan. Everybody in this room just about knows me. I'm a hard worker, everybody knows I'm dogged, and I, and I love this city, and I love Brockton, and I want to help. So thank you, Mark Lindy, September 9th, primary day. I need your support to go to the next round. Thank you. Um, I saw a candidate come in the room who is running for state treasurer, and sorry, Scott, you're not on this ballot. I'm going to get you put up here soon. You're on the November ballot. But a good friend of mine, Barry Feingold, is a candidate for state treasurer. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Democrats. How are we doing, all right? We need a good day on Tuesday. I don't care what candidate you're supporting. We need to make sure we have a good... Make sure we have a good... I'm all excited, so I don't... I'm all, I'm all, I'm all fired up. So listen, listen, I don't care. I want, I want you to listen to this, okay? Don't burn the money. I'll, I'll protect the money. Don't you worry about that. I want to make sure we get a good vote out on Tuesday. Whatever candidate you're supporting. My name is Barry Feingold, and I am the son of two public school teachers. And they taught me that there's no magic in life, there's only hard work. So when I was 10 years old, I had a paper route for the Boston Globe delivering newspapers at 10 in the morning, at 5 in the morning. When I wanted to go to college, I unloaded trucks at 3 in the morning to help pay for my own college education. When I wanted to go to law school, I worked two jobs during the day. Everything has always been about hard work. And if you give me the chance as your next day treasurer, I'm going to work hard every day. But more importantly, I'll never forget where I've come from. That is why when I saw these employees, these workers from Market Basket say, you know what, we're going to fight for good work, good wages. We're going to fight to make sure that we don't have corporate greed and make sure that we can fight for low-cost groceries for communities like Brockton. I said to myself, I just stand with these workers. And at the end of the day, we won out. And I will continue, that's right, he clap for that. Every so often the middle class does win. And as the next state treasurer, I'm going to fight for the middle class each and every day. I'm going to use the pension funds to invest in Brock and other surrounding communities. I'm going to have the world best world class school building authority. I'm going to make sure that we have local aid coming back to our local communities. It is, that's right, thank you clap for that. <laughs> It is an honor to be here today. I see Red and so many other great Democrats. We have a job to do tomorrow, and then we have to have a job to do in November. And I want to leave you with a story about Tip O'Neill. Tip O'Neill ran for office, and the first time he ran, he lost. And he didn't know why he lost. And he went to his neighbor's door, knocked on her door, and he, said, and, she, and he said to her, how come you didn't vote for me? You know what she said? She didn't ask. So my last thing is I'm, I'm going to respectfully ask for each and every one of your votes on Tuesday. My name is Barry Feingold. I'm running for treasurer. I'll be a treasurer you can trust, and I'm going to work on every single day for all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Down on the ballot, I put ballots on the table so you can check them out. But Scott Becky is a candidate on the November ballot, and he's on a post. He's a good Democrat, and I want to give him a few minutes to introduce himself to Brock. Good morning. The one good thing about being last is if I'm a little late, it really doesn't matter because I stand in the corner and wait for my turn anyway. Uh, but I came from the Triton Democrat uh, meeting over in Bridgewater, sorry, in Whitman, which was East Bridgewater, Whitman, and Abington. I am actually on the primary ballot, however, I'm unopposed. I'm the only Democrat on the primary ballot. If you go to the bottom right-hand corner of the sample ballot, you're going to find me. After that, there's no more paper. So 
So I'm hoping that all of you are going to vote for me on Tuesday. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win that one. <laughs> but more than that, like I said, I, I look forward to your support in November. Real quick, uh, I'm the last guy, so I try to be quick. I'm a retired Marine. I've been a police officer for over 20 years, and I'm an attorney. Leadership, crisis management, and a legal background, very important qualifications in, in any candidate. Um, I'm very passionate about the Office of County Commissioner. I think the county government's very important. I hope to help Greg Hanley do a good job when I'm, when I'm elected on November 4th. Notice I said when, I'm very confident. However, I'm challenging an incumbent Republican, right? And that's a very difficult task to accomplish, is to unseat an incumbent Republican. So I'm hoping that, that uh, all of you can, can help out. If you know a lawn sign location, or you know an event that I should be at, uh, my website is voteforbecky.org, www.vote, the number four, becky.org. Um, I have stuff in my pocket I didn't get here in time to throw them all out on the tables. Um, but I can't do it without your help. And more than that, you know, I'm asking for your vote. Like Barry said, you have to ask, because if you don't ask, you might not get it. I'm asking for your vote both in the primary and in the general election. Not just because I'm a Democrat and you're a Democrat, but because I'm the best candidate. And I think that even if you take away R's and D's and you put my qualifications next to, next to the person I'm challenging, you'll see that I'm the best candidate for that office. So please take a look at the website. We're on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Um, I'll be around if you know, anybody wants to talk. But again, I ask for your support both on Tuesday and after Tuesday when we all get behind everybody. I'm hoping that I can get some help as well, because I really need your help. Thank you very much. Scott's running a really scary campaign all around Plymouth County in November 4th, but he needs your vote on September 9th. I'm just going to introduce uh, Mike. Mike has something to say. Uh, I know, I know. I'm going to be brief, but uh, I want to thank everybody who showed up today because it's a beautiful day out there. And we can't do our job without all of us working together. That's why after Tuesday, we have to be unified. I wouldn't be in my seat without the uh, support of a great uh, city council, Bob Sullivan, who, who was in that primary race six years ago, as well as Connie Units. We all got unified, and I want to thank everybody here for your support. Because I wouldn't be here as an elected official without your support. And, and um, I have to recognize a great colleague of mine who's doing a fantastic job, and they sit her next to me to keep me in line in the state house. That's Claire Cronin. 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 You're taking his piece. Oh, but that's all right. But, but John Buckley, Register of Deeds, let's give him a round of applause. And Lon's here, former state legislator, Mark Lund, former judge, doing a great job. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Shana Barnes, City Council in Brockton, the lovely and talented Shana Barnes. Let's give him and uh, I want to thank you, but the bottom line is, no matter who you support on Tuesday, Claire and myself and Tom Kennedy as well. Tom's away out of town right now, but he's been a great friend and mentor to us, Tom Kennedy, who, who has a Republican opponent in November. So we have to all get out and vote and be unified in November. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to finish introducing the uh, elected officials in the room as well. Um, Greg Hanley, we acknowledge before our Plymouth County Democratic Plymouth County Commissioner. And make sure when we haven't gotten to um, Dennis and Airy, Councilor from Ward 3, in the back. I'm acknowledge Councilor uh, Robert, Council President Robert Sullivan was here earlier. Okay, and looking around the room, Shirley, Shirley Asaph from Ward 7. I feel very closer. Notice there's just a few Democrats here, and uh, we all, um, he, he introduced Shana, but Shana's right in the front. Shana's second round of applause. signed in to make sure that we don't miss anybody. But all the Democrats in this room, all the people that are sitting in this room, give yourself a round of applause because you're the people that have all of us. Uh, 
good friend of mine, Craig Barger, from Easton, the Democratic Council. <laughs> Archie Gormley, the president of Rockland Firefighters Union. Uh, Cindy Fitzgerald, who is a library trustee in Kingston Housing Authority. She's over there taking a picture with Bob. Our mayor, Bill Carpenter, was here earlier. And Paul Skanetsky, who doesn't like to be on any list, but I put him there anyway. Uh, let's see. Steve Bernard, the president of the NAACP. Tim Cruz, the Ward 1 City Councilor. And is there any other elected officials in the room that I did not acknowledge? I'm sorry? I did Dennis and Harry. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this over to, uh, well, Ozzie Jordan is actually an elected official. Uh, on the school committee, and he's the, uh, the chair of this committee. So I will turn the mic back over to Ozzie, and you can wrap up the event. Thank you. Looks like we're going to get out of here early if I don't stay in here too long. I want to with Mike Brady. We always tease Mike. You know when you give him a microphone, forget it. We have some youngsters in the room back there, some young folks. Stand up. Stand up back there. They have some young folks in the room. the microphone so you can say a little something. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the red that we know? Red, thank you. A true Democrat. Yeah, I hope so too. We know so. I hope you took a look at the book that we put together. Beautiful job. Thank you. There's a piece in here since Paul didn't want to say too much, which is uh, highly unusual, those of you who, who know him. Let me just read what I put into his family. Congratulations to the Sullivan family, two great champions, Paul, Red as we know him, and Gene, who although are ordinary people, they represent the best of the city of champions and the best of the Democratic Party. Let's hear it for Paul and for Gene. Please take a look up at our booklet. These are folks that contributed to today's uh, event. And hopefully these are folks that you'll you know, buy their products or deal with them one way or another. I have a few of the folks that are on the city committee that I'm here. All he spares is the second vice president. He couldn't be here today because he had a previous engagement. Uh, Derice Smith who's working with Steve Grossman is the, I forget her proper title, but she's heading up all of Dorchester for the Grossman campaign. So again, that's why she's not here. And I have a, uh, a special thanks to Larry Curtis. Some of you know that I have a family member uh, that's going through some issues that I've been dealing with. And Larry stepped up basically covered for me and others. Larry, thank you. <laughs> Tuesday, what's happening Tuesday? Election! Voting! Come on, people. We're winning! <laughs> Let's try this again. Tuesday, what's happening Tuesday? Voting! 